This is a brief explanation of how SRTR calculates the estimated probability of survival. The estimated probability metric shows us a percentage that has not been adjusted with risk adjustments, and so it can be viewed as the observed rate of survival. But dividing the number of failures or deaths by the number of transplants typically produces an observed survival percentage. In some cases, the product of this division can be very close to the published estimated survival rate, which can be confusing, but that is not exactly how the estimated survival probability is derived. For post-transplant metrics, SRTR analyzes what is happening with a group of recipients receiving transplants in a specific time range, 2.5 years. SRTR analyzes one year worth of data collected on each recipient given transplants in this range. For those recipients transplanted in the last six months of the cohort, SRTR sensors at six months of follow-up because a full year of follow-up data is not yet available. The reason we use six months of data without a full year of follow-up is to make our cohort more recent. Because SRTR is lacking data in the last six months, we need to estimate the probability of survival for the part of the cohort that was censored. This is done by applying a statistical method called the Kaplan-Meier method, which is a valid method for estimating one year survival even when part of the cohort does not have a full year of follow-up. With this equation, we estimate what would have happened in the last six months for the part of the cohort that only has six months of follow-up, based on what did happen in the part of the cohort that has a full year of follow-up. This is why we call it estimated probability of survival. For consistency, the one-month and three-year metrics are also estimated with the Kaplan-Meier method, even though for those metrics we do have full follow-up data for the entire cohort. The Kaplan-Meier Survival Estimator is based on the number of patients at risk and the number of events that occur. Follow-up for all patients in the cohort starts on the day of transplant. One way to imagine the analysis is to imagine that all the patients in the cohort were transplanted on the same day and followed for one year. Though we know that patients are transplanted on different days, and this is why patients transplanted in the later part of the cohort have less follow-up time. Therefore, all patients are at risk on the first day of the year of follow-up. The first thing to do is to sort all the patients according to the number of follow-up days in your expected survival workbook. There are three events on follow-up day zero. On day zero, which is the day of transplant, there were 184 patients at risk. Again, it may be helpful to visualize the calculation by imagining that all 184 patients were transplanted on January 1st, and that three graft failures occurred on that day. So the first row of our table is. Now we add the next row at follow-up day 37, the next time there was an event. There were 175 patients at risk on day 37, which would be February 7, if we were continuing to imagine all patients were transplanted on January 1. Three patients had an event on day 0, and six were censored between day 0 and day 37. And 184 minus 3 minus 6 equals 175. Censored is a statistical term that means the patient's follow-up ended for a reason other than graft failure. The number at risk on a particular day are all the patients for whom we could have observed a graft failure event. If a patient's graft fails earlier or the patient is censored earlier, we can't observe an event. We sort the table by follow-up time to make it easier to count the number of events and the number of patients at risk on each day. Now we add the next row at follow-up day 39. Since the patient whose graph failed at 37 isn't at risk on day 39, the number at risk drops by 1. We continue to fill out the rest of the table. Now we calculate the fraction of who survived at each time. That's at risk minus events divided by at risk. The survival estimator is the cumulative product of survival fractions, that is, multiply the survival fractions together. 
the survival estimator at time zero is just the survival fraction at time zero. The survival estimator at time 37 is the survival estimator at time zero times the fraction at time 37. The survival estimator at time 39 is the estimator at time 37 times the fraction at time 39. So the survival estimator at one year is all the survival fractions multiplied together. To express the survival as a percent, multiply by 100. The last percent in the last row, last column, is what would appear in your PSR in table C6D. Now you will be able to apply this method to your own recipient list and understand how the estimated probability is derived for your program, and why SRTR refers to this value as estimated rather than observed. For more specific information on how to interpret these resources, contact an SRTR representative at srtr.org. At